Hello, hello. So who, who poked the grab because he's late to his presentation today? I mean, yeah, I mean, like, I did, but I'm, I'm not sure how many of you, like, use grab today because you are late. So uh, my name is Omar, and I'm a uh, lead software engineer at Grab. Have worked on, uh, have been at Grab for four years, worked on multiple projects. Uh, when it comes to security, uh, developer experience, fraud detection, and app uh, performance. Uh, Grab is a, gold is a proud gold sponsor for uh, iOS Conf SG this year, and we thought this is a good chance to give you a very high level uh, briefing of our uh, scale, uh, the challenges that we have faced, and what solutions we came across. That would be like a very high level. Uh, that's like almost like two or three years of work. So you can always come over to our booth and like we'll, the people who worked on that will be so happy to, to give you more details and uh, discuss it with you. Cool. Okay, yeah, so whether you, you book a ride like to come here, just like myself, or ordering breakfast, which you don't need, but yeah, uh, or maybe other stuff like or booking a talk talk in Cambodia. <laughs> oh, booking a talk talk in Cambodia, or like paying for your favorite uh, bubble tea. First thing would come in your mind if you are living in Southeast Asia is Grab, and this is what Super App is about. It's a, an integrated platform of your everyday services. So you don't need to go through the hassle of installing or downloading, logging into a new app for each of your activities. Grab currently is serving millions of users across 480 cities in eight Southeast Asian countries. We are serving one in 20 Southeast Asian people to pay, eat, or take a ride. And that's also enabling everyday entrepreneurs to uh, have a better living. Okay, uh, Grab is super lo local, means we have different, we, we gotta support different languages different services in each different countries. But how does that reflect in our iOS super app? That means more than 200 iOS engineers working from eight different R&D centers in more, than two, in more than four different time zones. This also means millions of, millions of lines of code meteorized in more than 600 targets. We also have like hundreds of commits every day. We have more than 2K commits to the master every month. And that means thousands of CI pipelines. For every merge to the master, you have to go through an extendable test suit and linters to ensure this commit is of, of high quality. That also results in one weekly uh, release. And we have a new uh, feature being signed off almost every day. We have hundreds of experiments running in production at the same time. However, that comes with a price. Our build time was up the roof. Even opening Xcode was a nightmare for, for <laughs> any iOS engineer at Grab. So indexing was taking forever. Uh, Xcode was hanging all the time. And it was, it was impossible to use it. You're like, you would 
spend like your head, your whole day just restarting your machine to open the Grab app. It wasn't a good time to be a software engineer at Grab iOS software. Now it is, but I will tell you the reason why. So yeah, uh, usually like build was taking more than uh, 30 minutes to one hour. Uh, also our CI pipeline wasn't much better. Uh, it would take hours to merge the, even the smallest change. Uh, and we had a big problems of flaky test. Uh, if one test, if one flaky UI test fails, you would need to retry your whole pipeline. And that means waiting for three more hours to merge your change. We also, when that, that was like our DevEx or developer experience challenges, but we also have other challenges when it comes to the app performance. With, more, with the large numbers of modules, that's reflected into uh, higher start uh, app start time or increasing the app start time. And increasing the app start time would mean uh, users will spend more time to open the app, maybe wait like eight seconds to, to just use the app without going to, to the home and going to any service. If that's so long, then the app might get rejected. If, in the worst case, the app would crash if, if it takes longer than a, specific, a certain time to launch. We also have a problem of the app size. Imagine, imagine coming to, to any Southeast Asian company, country, you are at the airport, you want to download the Grab app to poke a ride, but you don't have enough storage to download the app. And that's actually was a problem of a certain percentage, which we came to know from uh, a market study. And here come the interesting part. How did we address these problems? When it comes, like, when it comes to the build time, we know that there is no server pilot, right? But Bazel built build system was, was our server pilot. Anyone heard of Bazel? Anyone using Bazel in, in an iOS project? Okay, it's a few of us. Xcode comes. Xcode is not only an ID. It comes with two side, with two parts. It has an ID and it has a build system. While the ID is great, it gives us like auto completion, refactoring, and these kind of stuff. the The build system is is quite outdated. It's not it's not that great. It it was it has a lot of limitation. It didn't enable us from to do like a lot of stuff like having having like a very like big number of engineers, you can actually use the, the output of a specific machine like in other machines, but Xcode weren't, wasn't enabling us to do that. So we thought maybe we should move to a, a different build system, and Bazel that was, was that other build system. Uh, Bazel is a more modern build system that enables both correctness and speed. Uh, and also enable use cases like remote cache or having, having your build cached and shared across multiple machines. Uh, that, uh, that wasn't possible, like with, with a very large code base, it wasn't possible to just stop all the, uh, the feature development and use uh, and like ask all the engineers to contribute to the Bazel migration, which was a huge effort. So we automated most of these, mi most of these migration activities. Uh, I would say almost 80% of the migration. We built our own house uh, automation migra migration automation tool, and that helped us uh, doing that migration without impacting the feature development. We also used a scope, 
uh, we also introduced something called scoped project, or well, that's what we call it internally. That means you can like generate a project. You don't need like to generate like a very huge project of millions of lines of code. You can just generate a project of a certain modules that you need to work on, or your team modules, or whatever dependencies you have, and that generated project will have like a very fast in indexing time, so you wouldn't need to wait whenever you open your project. One thing, like the, these two, like these changes like uh, has resulted into, as I mentioned, like build time was taken 30 to, to 60 per, uh, minutes. After that, after we delivered this improvement, build time was down to three, three minutes. That's 90% improvement. And that's our saved from our engineering time. And also a productivity post. But that left us with uh, the, other, the other problem, which is CI stability. We still had these flaky tests. We still have like a very big test suit. And we had like fa uh, tests failing for a very uh, different reasons. And it's like some of them doesn't make sense. And for that, we, we introduce, you can solve something if you don't know what's like the root cause of it. Uh, of it. So we introduce Flaky Test Analyzer. That's a tool to get the results of the different tests and uh, know what, detect the Flaky Test and the, even like better like uh, detecting the source, like the, the root cause of that Flaky Test and we were able to, to, to to work on it. Uh, that results in multiple fixes. Uh, some of them were like hacks and some of them are more like uh, uh, defined process, but like these fixes came like to like uh, different stuff like uh, mocking deep links. Deep links can cause some of these like uh, failures and uh, para testing and even like lo 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 porting the simulator with predefined uh, per user permission, which can prevent that flaky uh, first test thing. Moving to the third, to the third challenge and the third solution, the app start time. So the app start time was very high because of the number of the number of modules. Because App start time and for e for each iOS uh, app comes in two parts: the pre-main function and the main function itself. For the pre-main function, function it's mainly the the linking time of each module. And if you have 600 dynamic modules, that linking time will be like very high. And the and the but like the, the post main function is like the, the functions that you have on the app launch or you initialize, uh, like the libraries that you initialize on the app launch. The, for the pre-main, we decided to migrate all, to change all the linking time for, type for all the modules to static, and that saved us a, big, a very big time or a very big percentage of the app start time. We also decided to defer every library or and every initialization that's not needed in the in the main uh, in the main function to uh, defer it to another time in the app when it, when it's actually needed that uh, that resulted in like kind of very like uh, small start time you can like actually say it in your app now it's like it's most of the time it's it's it launches most in less than uh, one second, if you are lucky. Okay, so that takes us to the fourth, to the fourth challenge, and the solution for that. Uh, just like app start time, you, if you can't measure or know what contributed to that, you wouldn't, you wouldn't fix it. For app start time, it was easy to measure. Just like every uh, uh, iOS tools provide you with the premium and you can just measure the initialization of every function after uh, every initialization after uh, the premium uh, but for the app size like working on an app that like you have like uh, more than 30 tech families and each t these like squads like has like sub teams 
and these teams, each of these teams owns their own module. So measuring the app size for the whole app is not that useful. You would need to know, like, you would need to have a granular uh, view of what, what contributes to that app size. Is it three sources? Is it the, the code size? which we, we have a huge code size and we still have like a lot of resources for like different services. So uh, we built our own like uh, app size analyzer uh, tool and we run it on every commit uh, to the main branch. Uh, that tool gave us an answer, give us the answers of like what targets contribute to what to the app size. We would and what resources, what type of resources, and these all these answers. That tool was uh, also gave us like uh, the areas of improvements which we later worked on. We provided compiler optimizations, and and that's like uh, so for for Swift compiler, it provides you by default like two two types of uh, optimizations. Like you can build for size, and you can build for speed. And if you build for uh, if you build for speed, you will do something called inlining, which like uh, you will uh, take every line of code and actually copy it into the out the outer function or the caller function, which would result in a, a bigger size but faster performance. Which like for some applications that that's what they need. But for if you wanna uh, if you wanna actually optimize the size, then you would do something, you would optimize for size, which is called outlining. Outlining, you would like just like, uh, rather than uh, copying it outside, you would actually, unif like if some, if two lines of code is like the same, you would just like extra extract them, the compiler will extract them to a third function, and that would be like, that would be less size. The, the, fun, thing, uh, the fun part about this, like, while Swift compiler does it for you once, you can you can actually do it multiple times. You can like do some compiler hack to do the outlining multiple times because if you extract one line of code, that might result into two functions being identical. Then it would be extracted again. And if you run it maybe ten times or something, you would need to find like your like sweet spot or like what what would be because at some point if you kept outlining. Either it would run, it results into your code being corrupted, or it would result into slightly increase in size as well. Uh, another thing that we worked on was with remote resources. We built our own like remote packet, which deliver the resources in like uh, or the assets in a very short time, and like it's like smooth matter, so it's like manner, so the user won't even notice that uh, that's been. Uh, hosted remotely. Also, we uh, to improve the disk uh, size, we worked on uh, cache improvements, which means like for the whole app, you have like a unified app uh, cache and you have like uh, multiple, uh, and you have like uh, for this unified app uh, uh, cache, you have like also regular cleaning up, which done like uh, regularly. Okay, and uh, to quick recap, that's one, one, uh, one everyday super app, four challenges, and four solutions. And now time for a quick trivia. Which of these services Grab never offered? Lambo, horse, helicopter, or tow? Okay, actually it's tow. Oh, tow, yeah. Uh, we grab Lambo is an experiment. We have done ex that experiment, and grab horses is still there in Vietnam. If you wanna like, <laughs> if you are in some cities in Vietnam, so if you wanna like visit there, like I think it's Anhui or something. I don't. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing the city in the right way, but yeah, you can like have book your uh, grab horse helicopter was uh, a marketing. Yeah, and to never happen till now. You never know. Okay. Thank you, and uh, see you on the post for like more details.